minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I got to tell you, Mr. Chu, um, as a uh, father of a 16-year-old that uh, likes social media, uh, uh, the, a lot of your evasiveness today in answering many of these questions really disturbs me uh, because I can tell you that uh, the teenagers of today, they really don't want to be on Facebook. They, 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 want, they want your platform, and you were asked to come before this committee uh, to testify about many things, and, and a lot of us are worried about our kids' uh, personal data. Um, as the co-chair of the Congressional Voting Rights Caucus, I also worry that uh, TikTok uh, is the world's most powerful and, and extensive propaganda machine uh, allowing the Chinese Communist Party to use TikTok's platform to influence public opinion and undermine the integrity of our democratic elections. And I have a report uh, called TikTok and Facebook Failed to Detect Election Disinformation in the U.S. While YouTube Succeeds. And this report was published by the nonprofit Global Witness and the Cybersecurity for Democracy team at uh, NYU. And the purpose of the study was to test platforms like TikTok and whether or not they can detect and take down false political ads targeted at U.S. voters, young voters, uh, ahead of last year's midterm elections. And according to this report, 90% of election disinformation ads tested were approved by your platform. Again, uh, that is 90% of ads containing false and misleading election misinformation uh, went undetected on TikTok. Uh, and just to add some color to the type of misleading ads that were approved by TikTok, uh, this included ads that were live on TikTok that said the wrong election day uh, and actually encouraged people uh, to vote twice. You do know that voting twice is a felony. Mr. Chu, you do know that it's legal to vote twice. Congressman, um, any misinformation that comes around pol um, a political okay. election is uh, something we take very and seriously. Let me, um, I'm particularly troubled about this type of information uh, uh, because it can run rampant on TikTok. And given that TikTok again, uh, Y'all are appealing to a very young and diverse user base that is exactly uh, the people that we've seen targeted time and time again with uh, voter suppression campaigns run by malicious actors. Uh, Mr. Chu, do you agree with me that, is, that it is completely unacceptable that 90% of these ads were undetected on your platform? Uh, and can you detail for us right now TikTok's policy regarding election misinformation and paid political ads and how the company monitors such information and how you plan to get that number down to zero. While TikTok is a place for our users to come and express their points of views freely, uh, we do take misinformation, dangerous misinformation, particularly around an election, very seriously. And we will work with third party experts to identify mis um, uh, misinformation. You, and you call allowing 90% of false content, political content uh, on your platform to be Take it, call, you call that, you define that as being taken seriously? I, I, um, I need to look into the specifics. I, I'm, I'm you know, not sure where the number came from, but I can tell you, Congressman, that we are the only platform that I know of that doesn't actually take political ads. Uh, we don't, we don't accept Chu, money. I don't think other platforms can say that. Mr. Chu, can you detail how you responded to that report? Did you respond to that report that I just mentioned? I need to look at the specifics of the report, okay. Congressman, and I can get back to you on that. All right. Mr. Chu, I want to shift to Project Texas. I know that we've discussed this initiative throughout today's hearing, but I want to dive deeper into your notion that promises about Project Texas should give us any confidence in TikTok's ability to localize U.S. data and discontinue access to that data to ByteDance employees in China. Uh, why? Because we've already had a TikTok executive appear, appear before Congress and give sworn testimony about the comfort that we should take in TikTok's uh, U.S.-based resources. Well, TikTok uh, uh, data security practices were being scrutinized by the U.S. government, and unfortunately, uh, we've since found out uh, from, a, uh, uh, from journalists and recorded conversations uh, that those assurances were, uh, were worthless. Uh, in your testimony, you also mentioned that Oracle has already begun inspecting TikTok's source code and has access to the platform's recommendation algorithm. Uh, why should this give the American public uh, any great assurances, particularly uh, given uh, that Oracle now owns a stake in TikTok and stands to gain monetarily uh, the more revenue that TikTok and its algorithm generates? Congressman, not only is Project Texas unprecedented in our industry in protecting U.S. user data and interests, we are inviting third parties to come in and monitor this. 
and we will you know, be transparent in that process. And this is more beyond most comp all companies that I know of in my industry. Thank you, Madam so Chair. I'm out of time. Gentlemen, yield back.